Hey everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Center Career Mode with Reinstein. How you doing? Today is kind of an exciting day. We are going to begin to construct our moon base. And as part of that, we're going to need a way of moving various parts around on the surface of the moon. That being said, I have built what I call Sky Crane with Moon Base Zero. <laughs> it's essentially the first part uh, of several stages that I'm going to need to launch if I want to build my space base. Now this is kind of aside from the contract. They haven't actually asked me to build one, but I've always wanted to build one. And I'm at a stage where I now know how to do it. Now these little cars, I can't take credit for them. Uh, there's a channel called Kerbal Space Command with a guy called Ruben who presents them. And I learned how to build these cars from there and the sky crane in fact because uh, I just could not figure it out for the life of me um, my cars are slightly different to his but very very similar and essentially they're just going to drive parts around connect them together on the moon so that is part one that will be landing you can see the cost there 125,514 and uh, next up let's look at the second part Okay, so moving on to our second part of our moon base, the rocket that will carry up the second part is called Sky Crane with Moon Boost 1. How imaginative am I? <laughs> the important things to note on this are the landing module. Now, let me just decouple the top. Oh, ah, it's all gone wrong. Let me just press Control Z, get that back. Okay, delete. Yeah, the second part. So essentially this bit I'm highlighting with my mouse. So that will be the bit that will remain on the moon. This bit on top is merely the sky crane that drops it down to the surface and can potentially be reused providing you are economical with the fuel. Now, as I said, this part is really important. Let me just move this out of the way. This stage is really important. So basically every part of the base on the moon will consist of this bit here that I'm pulling away right now with the docking ports on it. I've lined them all up, placed them on separately and everything and on this and then on top of that you can obviously put whatever you want. The first part I've put on is a hitchhiker storage container. The contract wanted me to put I think have a capability of 10 Kerbals on the moon so I've aimed for that. Uh, so this is the first part. This, These bits here are small holding tanks that I've that they're just empty. You can empty them and increase them of ore at your will, as you can see. Uh, the important thing about these are these are going to be connecting parts. So they're the bits I'm going to use to connect one of these modules to another module that I land. And henceforth, they have docking ports on the side as well. So now let's take a look at the third part of my base, or the second part of my base, the third rocket that we're going to be launching. Okay, so the third rocket that I'll be launching in order to put together my moon base will be base part 2, hence why I've called it Sky Crane with Moon Base 2. Again, imaginative. Um, this is only very slightly different to Sky Crane with Moon Base 1 in that it's got a viewing cupola on top. That was part of the contract, they wanted me to add a viewing cupola. Now take um, the contract wanted me to add uh, have facility supporting 10 Kerbals so just take note I've now got a hitchhiker storage container or two of them I will have they contain four each so that's eight and a viewing cupola that can support another one making nine Kerbals that we could support potentially so obviously we needed a third part of my base, and the third part's the most interesting part. Let me introduce it to you. Oakley Oakley Sky Crane with Moon Base 3. This is the last part of my moon base that I wanted to build. So on this one I thought I'd add a mobile processing lab. If you remember, we've so far got support for nine Kerbals. By using this, we can support eleven Kerbals on the moon. Now I wanted to add loads of scientific instruments, so you can see I've placed them around there. Uh, the contract wanted us to be able to beam back information, so we've got a communitron. It needed to be able to provide its own power as well, so we've got some solar panels, got a battery pack here, and some giant solar arrays here, which I absolutely love. They look pretty cool, right? That looks really neat. 
Um, and that's the third and final part in the construction of our base. All we have to do is land them all and put them together. Now, I'm not going to show you me landing them all, but I will show you some of me landing some of them. And uh, I'll show you some of the construction as well. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy it. Obviously, any successful mission involving any part of Kerbal Space Program starts with the launch. Now, I just wanted to show you how these rockets fly, because they look a bit cumbersome, and they don't look particularly aero aerodynamic, especially with all these bits sticking out everywhere. So I've used a lot of space tape in order to uh, keep, it, keep it all structurally sound. Now, there we go. I've uh, decoupled my solid fuel boosters. Now, what I'm trying to show here is how much I've learned. I've kind of learned how to do a gravity turn. Thank you, Omar. I think I'm doing quite well here. Now, this rocket does experience some torque uh, kind of from, I think, from the front. I think that's the right way of saying it. Um, so when you're trying to turn right, it kind of tries to wiggle back left. Um, but it's not too big of a deal, and it's relatively easy to control. Now, um, it's important to keep in mind how much um, thrust you're putting out at certain heights. So, as you know, as I'm trying to aim for a stable orbit around Kerbin, I try to do this gravity burn as well as I know I can. Um, I wanted to aim for around. I always like to aim for about 75,000 meters uh, at the apoapsis, the highest point of the trajectory. Then I want to try and circularize my orbit. Uh, so the apoapsis and periapsis are relatively similar, as close as I can get them. Now, you can see that required a delta V of 1,434. So once we get to the maneuver point, we kick in the thrusters again. Um, and I always tend to start my burn a little bit before halfway between uh, the estimated burn and the node in T time. So the estimated burn may be a minute. I'll, I might start my nude in T at like 40 seconds, something like that. So, yeah, this part of the video is really showing you how I launched um, these stages or these rockets into orbit. Because, like I say, they were a bit cumbersome. Um, and you might notice that the little ore holders, the ore tanks on the side, didn't have any um, ports on them. Anyway, let's skip forward. I did my gravity burn, did quite well there. It's time to land this thing. Now, I've already landed the little cars that I'm going to be maneuvering parts around on the moon with. And there is my landing spot right there, the little white ship. I hadn't set the, set them as rovers or anything yet, so they still look like a little little satellite. I think that's the icon for. But landing close to where you've landed before is surprisingly difficult. I, um, I've i actually got better at it since this video, but yeah, it is quite a difficult trick. If anyone knows any way of getting closer to where I landed previously, that would come in immensely handy. Uh, but there we go. Um, we're not too far away. You can see we're about five kilometers up and we're about five kilometers away from our rocket. Now, the reason you want to land as close as you can to the previous landing spot is because otherwise you have to get the rovers, drive them backwards and forwards, bringing the part to where you eventually want to make your base. And although you won't see it in the video, it took, it takes, it took a long time. Um, you can mess around with the speed of the game and stuff to drive over the surface, but if you go too fast, then your rocket will, uh, your cars will blow up and parts will fall off. So you may see one of my cars without its uh, docking port at the back. That's because I drove too fast and blew the back off. <laughs> but anyway, here is my landing zone. I was quite happy with that. Within two kilometers is acceptable for me. Um, on one of these landings, I got within six kilometers that required a bit of a drive so you really uh, if you're new to this like I am and uh, you want to improve then yeah try to get as close as you can because otherwise you'll be driving for a long long time over the lunar surface now I, I love the way the graphics look on this like sure I'm landing in the darkness but you can see a huge crater there to my right and if I did this mission again, I certainly wouldn't choose a base location that is uh, anywhere near a crater because sometimes I landed these rockets kind of on the edge of the crater just because of the difficulty of landing in the same spot. And then, uh, yeah, had a, had a funny time with one of my modules rolling down the hill, etc. And I couldn't catch up with my rover, so it blew up. 
which is lovely. Anyway, we landed this part, and that is awesome. So all you've got to do then is just decouple the sky crane part and leave the module there. Then I had to go and take the cars to go and get the part. As you can see, here are my cars. I've managed to attach them together. Um, and I'm carrying the module with Bill Kerman in it um, from landing spot one because I actually found a place in between both landing spots, which was relatively flat. Um, so this is where I wanted to set up my base. Now, controlling these cars is hard. Remember to turn on your SAS. And also, remember to control whichever one you want. I, ch I tend to use the car at the front. Right-click on the remote guidance unit and uh, click control from here. It makes steering a hell of a lot easier. Uh, since this video, I've had to land some replacement cars because one of my cars just flipped out. And no matter what I did, it would not control. If I touched any buttons, it took off and flew across the lunar surface and kind of blew up. So anyway, there we go. Move out of the way, uh, module, landing can, one, whatever you are. The little uh, ore tanks next to it. Get out of the way. Uh, Bill needs a place to stay. So here we are just moving things around. It is really difficult driving across the surface. I imagine it's quite more difficult driving on Minmus. I may cover building a base with my future with my knowledge that I now have on Minmus or I may actually go to Duna and try and build a base so here we go here I'm I, basically I'm learning to control these cars I'm like how the hell do you control them? I mean you have to switch for all the different parts you've landed etc etc so get your car to let go of that little landing can you can use Q and E as I'm doing here to sort of flip out of the way because gravity is so low so then we've got Bill and you can just Q and E and rotate it and flip it up and down, like I said, because gravity's so low. Then I thought I thought I was going to connect this part to my base, and uh, I actually had it upside down there. As it turns out, this doesn't become part of my base, but uh, it's interesting to see these things nonetheless. Look at the propulsion on those legs; it almost takes it off into orbit again. So that's essentially the first part of the base that we saw just there. Um, then it's time to control the cars again. Come on, car. See, you can see the difficulty I'm having. I just cannot get control of it. Doesn't matter what buttons I press. Eventually, WASD works. As long as you select the remote guidance unit and control from there. Kind of looks like the grabbing part is uh, is kind of a bit wonky. Maybe it's blown, you know, I don't know, taking an impact from a micrometeorite or something. Anyway, it's kind of cool because you can just grab hold of stuff like this with the grabbing claw and then move it. Uh, in order to connect the things together, you can simply um, lower the legs and then the second part have the uh, another part that you want to add to it. You lower the legs on that and then you just sort of drive them together. And the docking ports have a little magnetic effect where they pull them together. Anyway, then I needed to move mo Moon Base Module 2. And if you remember, this is the bit with the viewing cupola on board. That's a bit of a blooming drive, I tell you, to get to... Uh, where we're eventually setting up base. This is the time when I landed six kilometers away. Um, so yeah, as before, please give me some tips on how to land in the same spot. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not it's not perfect controlling these um, rovers, I suppose, because everything's weightless. I suppose that's why you're getting a lot of jiggering and, and things don't exactly connect together perfectly. Um, there are mods that actually help with that. There's a, a mod that enables you to build habitats on the moon uh, and wherever, other planets. Um, there's actually this really cool mod that I really want to use in an upcoming video where it, um, it's got real life uh, planets. Um, and Elu's moved to be a moon of another planet and it looks pretty badass. Anyway, you can see me just basically driving across the surface. Uh, you're not going to have to watch it all. And that is about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Join me on the next episode.